Well, praise the Lord for kids, and praise God they have junior church, amen? And so, glory to God for that, amen. Hallelujah. All that energy bundled up inside of them, man. Woof. <laughs> it is good to be saved. Thank you for that, ladies. That was fantastic. Praise the Lord for the ladies of our church, amen. They are tremendous, and I thank God for their ministry here. Fantastic. First Thessalonians chapter number 5. First Thessalonians chapter number 5. We read several verses this morning, but we're going to be looking at simply one as our text. And with Thanksgiving approaching, I've been preaching the last couple of weeks on Thanksgiving, and I'm going to do that again today. And so I praise the Lord for His goodness and His grace. It's good to be saved, amen? It's good to be born again. It's good to be a part of the family of God. And I'm thankful for all that He's done for us. He is so good to us. And I think so many times we, we get our eyes off of Him and get our eyes on the things around us, and it really does pull away uh, and hinder our relationship with Him. And we have to be so very careful for that, amen? And so as we jump into this, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, I simply want to look at verse number 18. And uh, a good study for you to take and do on your own would be to simply just search through the Scriptures and find this phrase, everything. You'd be amazed at what the Bible talks to us about as far as everything is concerned. It talks about being in prayer in everything. And then we see in this verse, in verse number 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. This is God's. You want to know what God's perfect will is for your life? It's for you to be thankful in everything. Everything. Whether it be a health problem, whether it be a family problem, whether it be a financial problem, whether it be a church problem, whether it be a, nation, a national problem, and there's plenty of those, whether it be weather problems, that we're to give thanks in everything. Now, you know that I am not fond of cold weather. Yes, my last name is Frost, but I don't really care for Frost. Amen? Now, I love the people by the name of Frost, but I am not real fond of that stuff that we find on our windshields and on the ground in the morning. I'm not fond of that at all. Amen? I like nice 70, low 80s with no humidity. Amen? That's my favorite kind of weather. And so, and actually, low 80s with no humidity, Humidity, man, just to set out there in that heat and just bake and feel the goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It takes all the aches and the pains away. And so anyways, the will of God for every Christian is to be thankful. And boy, the song this morning was just fantastic. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. No matter what is going on around us or in our lives, we're to be thankful people. Sometimes it is hard to give thanks, but it is always right to do so. The very first president of the United States of America, George Washington, as uh, they instituted the national thanksgiving, and we're talking about this matter of being thankful, he made this statement, this proclamation, I do recommend that to be devoted by the people of these states, each of us should give thanks for the great and glorious God who is the author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, and that we may unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection for the people of this country. And now, I don't know what happened in our nation, but I wish some of our political leaders would talk this way today. Amen. And so what a wonderful statement by our very first president. Yes, this is, was established as a Christian nation. I believe that our first president was a born-again Christian and was one of the, uh, that knew his Bible and knew God's will concerning this matter of thankfulness. Uh, Joni Erickson Tata, a quadriplegic who, who uh, broke her neck in a diving accident, uh, she's an author and she 
she wrote this, giving thanks is not a matter of feeling thankful. It's a matter of obedience. This is the statement that she made. We are to obey God. It is the will of God that we be thankful people. And we ought to be thankful for everything that takes place in our life. And you say, that's a hard, a tall order. Yes, it is. But by the grace of God and by his goodness, if we have the right mindset before God, we will be thankful. Because no matter how bad this life gets, we have an eternity of good to look forward to. And the Bible says all the good, or really it does say this, all the good that was, is, and will be comes from God. Go to James. This is... This will be free, amen. I won't charge you for this, I promise. And so James chapter number one, amen. James chapter number one, I want you to go there and look with me in your Bibles. I want you to see this matter, this thought of good. And we're going to see this in verse number 17. Actually, back it up to verse 16. Verse number 16, when you're there, say amen. Do not err, my beloved Brethren, can I get a witness? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? And cometh down from the Father of lights. Amen. With whom is no variableness. In other words, he's not going to change. Neither shadow of turning. There's not even a shadow of change in our God. The Bible says the Lord changes not. Can I get a witness? This is how we don't sign off part of our Bible or or passages of Scripture because, well, that was that dispensation or to those people. Amen. Can I get a witness? Our Bible is for each and every one of us from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage, we see here this matter of thankfulness. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. It's concerning me. I'm to be thankful in everything. Whether what comes and goes, I'm to be thankful. Thankfulness is not a matter of when one feels like it or because the circumstances in one's life seem to be favorable at the time. It is a command to be thankful. And we have an attitude of gratitude. Listen to me. It will change the way we view every part of our life to be thankful what's going on in our lives, what's to be thankful what's going on in our children's lives, what's to be thankful what's going on in our parents' lives and in our other relatives' lives, to be thankful for what God is at work doing. And I can promise you this right now. God is at work. You may not be able to see it. You may not be able to understand it. Go to Isaiah with me, if you would, please. This is another, another freebie, Amen. Hallelujah. All kinds of free stuff this morning. Take advantage now. I don't know about you, but I love free. Look at verse, uh, chapter number 55 with me, if you would, please. Chapter number 55. How can we know? Man, it, it is beyond us. Verse number eight, if you would, please. Verse number 8 of chapter number 55, if you're there, say amen. amen. For my thoughts are not your what? Neither are your ways my what? The way that you think that it should work out, the way that you think things should be going, the way that you think the design should be. You say, I don't think President Biden should be the president of the United States of America. Well, I'm here to tell you, it didn't take God by surprise. And if they did cheat on the election, which I do believe they did, listen, the the bottom line is this right here. He is now the president of the United States of America. Can I get a witness? Well, he's not my president. Whether you like it or not, if you're an American citizen, say amen. He is too. And so listen to me. I'm here to tell you right now, whether you like the policies he's putting in place, God does all things well. Can I get a witness? And you say, he's tearing our country apart. God knows all about it. And I think God has an overall plan for the world. And you know what the problem is? Is too many times Christians try to run God like a puppet on a string. But that doesn't work, amen. You're the puppet. 
He's got the strings. Can I get a witness? And some of y'all are always trying to cut the strings. Can I get a witness right there? The apostle Paul said, I am a slave to Christ. Amen. And listen, I ought to be thankful for everything that God brings into my life. As we look at this, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. You say, man, I'll tell you what, if we could just turn this next election, yes, we should vote. We have the freedom to vote and we should vote and we should vote according to our biblical beliefs, amen? We should do that. But the bottom line is this right here, God is in control. And you know what's going on in the United States of America right now? Is supposed to be going on in the United States of America right now. And I'm excited because you want to know what it spells to me? It spells R A P Rap Chur T. Amen. And yeah, that whole word. Amen. I need to take lessons from Joe on how to spell. And so, anyways, that's what it spells to me. We're going to be getting out of here. Amen. And then what happens on this earth? Listen, I'm going to get a different view of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm excited about it. We've got an awesome God, and he's powerful. Listen, his ways, his thoughts are not ours. He's in control, and we ought to be allowing him to be God in our lives. You say, I don't understand why this happened in my life. You don't need to understand it. You just need to praise God for it and thank him. That's the will of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm trying to find out the will of God in my life. Just thank him, and you'll be filling the will of God in your life. Can I get a witness? And the more thankful you get, the better off you're going to be. Thankfulness is not a matter of when one feels like it or their circumstances are favorable, but it's a command from God. Let's look at three things here this morning, uh, uh, hopefully quickly. We'll be done hopefully within about an hour and a half or so. And so the first thing I want you to notice with me is, number one, the foundation of gratitude, the foundation of gratitude. When we stop and think about this matter, there is one thing that we should all Always thank God for the primary thing of when we first became a child of God. Listen, do you remember the day? You remember that song that talks about was it on? If it's on a Monday, nah, nah, and, and everybody who got saved on a Monday stands up. If it's on a Tuesday, do you remember the day, man? Do you remember the day when you got born again? The day where all of a sudden you were a sinner, and then all of a sudden you became a sinner saved by grace. Man, we ought to be praising God that we're saved every single day. No, how, how bad things get and how horrible life is. If you're going to heaven, give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. I've got the God of heaven and earth living right inside here, amen. And I'm thankful for that God. He is so good to me, no matter what comes and what goes, amen, when my back hurts and my knees are knobbing and all of these kind of things. And all of a sudden at, at 49 years old, I'm getting these little bumps and things and stuff like this. And, and I'm like, what is this thing? Got this little thing growing over here. And what in the world? What is all this hair in my ears? I've never had hair in my ears before. And then all of a sudden you got all these kind of crazy things happening that just just different, amen, things that used to, hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I love food. Amen. I am a lover of good food. I like okay food too. Amen. Listen, that's the truth of it. And you know what I found out? All of a sudden, some things that I used to be able to eat, man, I'm here to, do. I can too. I just got to pay for it. Amen. And so, listen, all of a sudden, I'll eat the same thing I've had for years. And all of a sudden, my tummy's just doing a rumble. Amen. And my stomach is praising the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, man, I'm telling you, all kinds of crazy things happening as you age. It's just nuts. Man, I just praise the Lord for his goodness. God is so good. Man, the foundations of gratitude, it's, it's salvation. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse number 15, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Yep. The truth of the matter is it is just an amazing thing that God would come down to a rebellious, sinful people and die for them to provide a salvation. A lot of the problem that we have in America today is people are just so good. They're just too good to be saved. When you talk about salvation and stuff like this, some people, listen, you remember the story about the woman 
who was pouring the, the oil on Jesus and anointing him and using her own hair to dry his feet and all of that, that yes, that precious ointment. They, they say that in that day that it was about a year's wages. It was expensive. And he poured it out and they murmured. And Jesus, Jesus said, uh, he gave a parable about two, two different people. One forgave little and one forgave much. And he said, which one do you think will love him more? Well, obviously the one who forgave more. And some of y'all in here, you feel like you were pretty good before you got saved. But the truth of the matter is, is each and every one of us, the enormity of our sin. And just because you don't see it, oh, it was bad. Just because you don't recognize it or willing to admit to it. We're just as sinful as the most sinful person on earth. We're guilty before a holy God. And we need to recognize the fact that how good God has been to us. And you know what? One of the first things that ought to come out of your mouth in a day is, Lord, thank you for saving my soul. Thank you so much that I'm not going to spend a second in hell. But that I've been born again and I'm saved. And I'm not just saved. I'm not just somebody who's going to get to go to heaven, but I'm a part of the family of God. I am a child of his. What a tremendous blessing. His salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the great preachers of the past, a fundamental independent Bible-believing Baptist by the name of Curtis Hudson. When his body, he was coming to the end of his life. It was either 94 or 95. It was the end of the year. There was a conference in those days called Southwide. And the conference was starting to turn. A lot of the preachers in there were changing their Bibles. They were starting to have problems within the conference among these men and he went there to preach one final message before he died and they brought him in and boy he just hardly could get into the pulpit he was frail and skinny cancer had eaten away his body and he got up in there and he preached a message called things that are different are not the same and man if you can ever get online try to find that message it is powerful and in that message he sings that great song we've sung many times here I am on the winning side. And man, and he sings, and at the end of the song, he sings, he sings, there is a fountain. And man, I'm telling you what, I remember the first time I listened to it, I ordered a set of tapes when I was in Bible college. This was a while ago, you could tell. Amen. And they were green tapes. Amen. It was a case and it had, had a, a set of tapes in there. And I, I wore that one, all the messages in there were good, but that one CD, man, I'm telling you what, I wore that thing out. I listened to it over and over and over again. I remember the first time I listened to that, and I listened to that man of God as he poured his heart out to those men in that conference to try and keep them from taking that turn that so many still today are taking. And as he preached that message and he sang those songs, when he got to that, there is a fountain, begin to sing. And I was sitting in my car driving down the road. Man, my heart just burst open. I began to weep. And the Lord stirred in me. I'm on the winning side. Psalm chapter number 95, verses 1 through 3, it says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. Listen, man, I'm telling you what, one of the worst things a person can do is when they're low is just skip church. This is where you need to be. You need to get in here and start singing unto the Lord and start talking to God and letting God take those cares. Listen, casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. Can I get a witness right there? And so as we look at this, I don't know why, I keep looking at my, sneak, my shoes thinking I'm wearing my sneakers. I see gray down there for some reason. I'm like, what in the world, man? This is driving me crazy. I look down, I was like, did I forget to put on my shoes? <laughs> so anyways, as we look at this and we see this, we see this matter, man, it is good to be born again. Romans chapter number 16, verse number 17, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart 
that form of doctrine which is delivered unto you. If you're saved in here, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good to be born again. The foundation of our gratitude, the first thing is our salvation. It's because we're saved that we should be so thankful to God in everything. God saved your soul. He, you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. And the worst they can do to you in this earth does not even begin to compare to the joy and the wonder that we're going to enjoy in heaven someday. It is beyond measure. Turn over with me to 2 Corinthians with you, if you would please. Second Corinthians, I want you to see this. This is such a powerful passage. I know we've looked at these things quite often lately, but I just can't seem to help myself. <clears throat> Chapter number four of Second Corinthians is just a few, few pages back in your Bible from where we're at in, in, in First Thessalonians. 2 Corinthians chapter number four, if you would please. Pick it up in verse number 8. Look at what it says, the Apostle Paul, talking to the, the believers at Corinth. He said, we are troubled on what? Every, Every side. side. Listen, that's, that's the life of a Christian. Yep. Get not to what? Distressed. Distressed. We are perplexed, but not in what? Despair. 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 Persecuted, but not what? Despair. Cast down, but not what? always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body can I get a witness for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh why do you go through what you go through in life? The bad things, the hard things, the physical things, the health problems, the fat, everything. What does it say? It says, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. For whose sake? Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh so that Jesus can be revealed in you. This is why. So don't complain about your infirmity. Glory in it. Amen. Because the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. Verse number 12. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. Verse number 15, let's read that together. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many read down to what? The glory of God. The suffering, the persecution, the troubles, the problems. All of these things come into our lives to help us to be more like Jesus. It's to draw us to him. Because sadly, all the blessings don't ever seem to do that for some reason. For some reason, when we seem to be prospering financially, when we seem to be prospering in, in areas of our lives, for whatever reason, during those times of prosperity, so sadly, so many times, we start getting the idea of self-sufficiency as humans and begin to stray from God and begin to think that it's because of us. And then what does God have to do? He has to come back around and redraw you back to himself. Are you with me? For all these things are for your sakes. Verse number 16. For which cause we what? Faint not. But though our outward man perish. And it is. Can I get a witness? 49 years old and I'm learning that. Amen. These last 10 years have been really exciting for me. 
Yet the inward man, and, and really, I mean, I'm still doing really good compared to, to some of y'all. Some of y'all are up there quite like Tony, man. He's just old, amen. And so anyways, <laughs> though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is what? Renewed day by day for our what? Now, this is the Apostle Paul that said this. Stoned to death outside of Lystra. Scourged, the Bible says. He was scourged five times. Suffered shipwreck. Fasting, not by choice, but by no reason. He didn't have food. Suffered. Stoned, beaten, spat upon. You, you know the stories we've read since we've been going through Acts. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a what? Let's just be honest, amen. I'm 49 years old, and it seems like it has just, just, just gone. Just quick. Where did the time go? And just, you know what? It won't be too far down the road. And we'll be blinking, and the next thing you know, we're going to wake up with Jesus. Amen. Are you with me? If the rapture doesn't happen, down the road, this person's going to pass away. We're going to have their funeral. We're going to sing and glorify God for their life and all of those things because they lived it for Jesus, because you lived it for Jesus, because you're going to live it for Jesus. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. And, and all of a sudden, we just, it, and it's just like, man, where did the time go? I mean, I can't even believe it's been five years since Brother Jim went on to heaven. That's just amazing. It's just, woof, gone. Five years. It's just going by so fast. It amazes me. Time just slips by quicker than you can blink. And before we know it, he says, our light affliction, which is but for a what? Moment. Moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of what? Trying to get out of the problems, trying to escape the suffering, trying to get away from, from the issue, the health problem, and this problem. And the whole time God is saying, listen, I am adding treasure to heaven for you through this affliction. Amen. You're going to thank me someday for the problems. And then you're going to be like, why did I try so hard to get out of this and fix this problem? Instead of just glorying in it and letting God bring me out in his time. Amen. Amen. Look at this now. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are what, but are at the things which are not what. In other words, keep your eyes heaven bound. Amen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Can I get a witness? All this stuff around us that we work so hard to acquire. All this stuff that we're living for so many times is just, it's, it's nothing. It's really, honestly, a good part of what we're doing is just a waste. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. That's what the Bible says. That is not my mentality or, or, or my... Uh, my philosophizing, or I didn't come up with this idea. This is simply what the Bible says. And we spend so much of our time trying to attain, trying to attain, trying to get stuff that someday is going to burn up in this old world. And it's amazing to me. You know, you stop and think about all of these things. We work so hard to get something, and then someday it's just going to be burned up. Are you with me? Come on, tune in. Don't tune out on me, Amen. I know I'm ringing some bells. Amen. Ding, 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 ding. Amen. I got the bell ringing. Hallelujah. Working so hard for stuff. And stuff, you just, you're wasting your life. Are you with me? Go over to James chapter number one with me once again. Actually, James chapter number four. Right after the book of Hebrews. I think I'm going to park here for a little while. I seem to have rung a bell. And I like bells. Amen. Anybody like bells? It's the love of the sound of bell. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the kids when they ring those little bells. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to keep ringing the bell I found. It's a, it's a pretty good bell. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at chapter number four of James. Look at 
Look at verse number one. We're probably going to work our way through that. I don't know if I'm going to get back to my message now. Verse number one of chapter number four of the book of James. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Question mark. He's about to give you the answer, amen? I just love the way the Word of God always answers its own questions, amen? Because if he allowed us to answer the questions, the chances are they'd be wrong. <laughs> Look at the answer. Come they not hence, even of your what? Lusts. Lust. That war in your what? Members. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye what? Ask not. And when ye do ask, look at what it says in verse number three, ye ask and receive not, because ye ask it amiss, that ye may consume it upon your what? Lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the what? is enmity with God. And what is, the what is the world all about? Chasing stuff, chasing money, and fulfilling the lust of their own flesh. Are you with me? We as the children of God are not to be like this. Can I get a witness? But he giveth, verse number six, I'm glad there's a change in tone. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the what? And boy, pride sure does manifest itself in all kinds of shapes and forms. But giveth grace unto the who? Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. In other words, clean up your hands and purify your hearts. And notice the order. You, it is really hard for you to get your heart clean until you stop doing what you're doing with your hands you're not supposed to be doing. Can I get a witness? Amen? You got you to you cut the chain. Amen? You got you to gotta break those things apart. Be a draw nigh to God, verse number 8, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Now, he's talking to people that need to get right with God and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you what? Up. You get down, and God will lift you up at the appropriate time. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother... And judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if a judge, uh, but if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a what? And it's better be a doer than a hearer. Can I get a witness? There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest what? Another. Go to now. Ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and do what? Buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Are you with me? But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is what? Evil. It's evil. Therefore, him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. And so as we look at this, life is but a vapor. And we think that, oh, man, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I've got this planned out. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to have that take place. And I've got all these plans all worked out. And you forgot to put God in the middle of all that. And say, if, if this is what you want, if the Lord wills, if this is what the Lord desires for my life, and we just leave that off and we forget about it. One of the saddest stories that I experienced in my life was one of the ladies that had joined our church. I baptized her. She got saved, all of these things. She had some health issues and problems. She died at a very young age, if I remember correctly. It was like either... 
52 or 55 years old. She was so young. It was in the first couple of years of our church, and, and uh, I was there at her bedside, and, and uh, there was just no comforting her. And she cried out, and she said, I've wasted my life. No matter what I said, she just kept on saying that over. I have wasted my life. How horrible. Something so precious that God gave us. The gift of life is from the Lord. How dare we take it for granted and waste it on stuff that matters not. And so as we look at this, praise God for the foundation of gratitude, His salvation. But secondly, I want you to notice with me His security, His security. Thank God for salvation. And you know what's so sad is so many people today that claim Christianity and say that they're saved believe that they can lose their salvation, believe that they can not, uh, uh, one day be saved and the next day not be saved because of certain actions or certain things that if they did, like if they killed somebody, they think they could lose their salvation. Now, I don't believe that a saved person would purposely murder somebody but an accidental death or something along those lines but but the simple truth of the matter is even if a saved person did plan and murder somebody are you with me did not david do that to try and cover up his sin he was saved and he didn't lose his salvation after it happened are you with me he was saved and so thank god for the security that god gives us and you ought to thank god because if your salvation, if hanging on to your salvation was dependent on you, you'd have to get saved several times every day. That's right. Amen? That's right. Throughout the day, I better get saved again. I just messed up again. Oh, I just had a bad thought about such and such. I just said a bad word about such and such. I just looked at a woman in the wrong way. I better get saved. I, because there ain't nothing in the Bible that says if you do this, you lose your salvation. Right. There ain't nothing. You can't find it anywhere. And if it's a gift of eternal life, how can that which becomes eternal stop being eternal? Right. It's eternal. Yeah. It's forever. You can't undo that. Look at what is uh, 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 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And what did you commit to him? Your salvation. You put your faith and trust in him to save you. Can I get a witness? And if it's truly in Christ to save you, by the way, who is God? The Bible says that he's got all the power in heaven and earth. Can I get a witness? I'm pretty sure he has the power to keep you. Can I get a witness? Go over to 1 Peter chapter number 1 with me. 1 Peter chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1, I want you to see this verse. Whew. Yeah, I'm probably only going to get through this first point. It'll be all right, amen. There's a lot of good stuff here. His security. Man, praise God. Thank Him for His salvation. Thank Him for His security. I'm so glad that I'm saved and I can't lose that. Because I would have lost it many, many times. As a matter of fact, probably would have lost it this morning, amen. I had to get right all over again right before I preach and all of this other stuff, which, you know, the simple fact of the matter is you say, even this morning, preacher? Yay, man. <laughs> man, you know that we sin so many ways, we don't even know that we're doing it, amen. It is unbelievable, and it's by the grace of God. Man, I'm telling you something right now. It, it is just unbelievable. His security. First Peter chapter number 1, look at this now. Verse number, uh, let's pick it up in verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a what? Lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the what? This is talking about our salvation, amen. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved where? In heaven for you. Hey, listen, if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. you got a reservation in heaven, amen. He has reserved your mansion for you. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah, love that song. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Hey, listen, I don't need a mansion down here, amen. 
because I'm going to get me one up there. Hallelujah. And you know what? Even if I had a mansion down here, it would not compare. <laughs> it's just amazing. And then I'd have to kill myself trying to take care of the place. No thanks. Amen. I want to go to a place where there's no dust. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nothing to clean. Amen. I can spill a drink and all of a sudden it's just clean. Woo. Glory to God. Could you say amen right there? Never have to wash a window again. That'll be great. Amen. Back at whoever. Man, I'm telling you what. I can't wait till the day. Never have to run another vacuum again. Amen. Be a wonderful thing, amen. My my heavenly Ford F one fifty that's going to be up there, amen. Never going to have to vacuum out the carpet again, amen. Never going to have to put a wax coat on it. Never going to have to get a rust repair or a dent taken out, amen. Hallelujah! We can play crash up derby and never crash. Hallelujah! Praise God! It's going to be good stuff. Hallelujah! It's going to be amazing. You say you're going to have Ford F one fifty in heaven? That's not a sin, amen. If a Chevy's up there, that's a sin. But anyways, <laughs> look at this now, verse number five. Before I continue to digress, verse number five, look at it now. Who are kept by the what? Power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. By your faith? Go to Galatians with me. Galatians chapter number two. That's good stuff. (laughs) You know, it's amazing to me how many scriptures just tie together. Galatians chapter number two. I love this kind of stuff right here. Galatians chapter number two. The Lord is so good. Just kind of keeps popping verses in my head. I love it. Galatians chapter number two. You know the verse, verse number 20. We looked at this not long ago. Look at what it says. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I what? In other words, I didn't physically get crucified. But I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but what? Christ liveth where? In me. Now the Bible says that your body is the temple of the who? Holy Ghost. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the what? Faith of the who? Son of God. Whose faith? The Son of God's faith. Amen? Amen. Hey, listen, it, we're kept by the power of God over here in 1 Peter chapter number 1, not by our faith, but by His faith. Amen? And that faith is a perfect faith. And so it says in here, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We are kept by the faith of the Son of God. We are kept by the power of the Son of God. We are kept by the washing of the blood of the Son of God. Hey, listen, I don't know about you. People do things for two reasons, basically, for significance and security. Those are the two basic reasons. If you can get that burned in your brain, you will understand why people do what they do most of the time for significance and for security. Those are the two reasons why people do most everything they do. Can I get a witness? And so as we look at this in this passage and we see, listen, listen, security. You want significance? Get it from God. You want security. You're not going to get any better security than from God. And there's not a better significance to have than to have the call of God on your life. Can I get a witness? And you say, well, I'm not a preacher, but you're a called child of God. Go to Romans chapter number 8 with me. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. Oh, man. How thankful are you? How thankful are you? When you got up this morning, did you thank him? Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you I'm saved. Lord, thank you for the wonderful gift of eternal life you've given me. Is that the way you wake up in the morning? Wake up in the morning, your back is just about broke because your bed's uncomfortable. Oh, Lord, thank you that I can still feel my back. Lord, thank you that I can still wiggle my toes. Lord, thank you that I can still chew my nails. Can I get a witness? Come on, some of y'all are nail chewers. I've seen your fingers, amen. Listen, hey, listen, I'm here to tell you right now, thank God. Thank God for the blessings he's given us. He's so good to us, amen. The Lord is so good. Man, what a tremendous blessing. I stop and think about all the blessings he's given to us and the fact that we are secure in Christ Jesus. Listen, you can't lose it. 
Romans chapter number 8, verse number 20. Eh, back it up, amen. Verse number 14. I was going to start at verse number 28, but we're backing it way up, amen. Verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God. And you say, well, I'm not really led by the Spirit of God. You just don't know it. Some of y'all in here, you're stubborn mules. Don't get mad at me, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord's trying to pull you one way, and you're just like, uh-uh. And the truth of the matter is, whether you like it or not, he's pulling you. <laughs> are you with me? I'm guessing that he's a lot stronger than you are. And sometimes, and it's half the problem in our lives. We get beat half to death by God, and really, it's not even getting beat by him. He's just dragging us along. And I don't know about you, a person that willingly walks behind somebody versus somebody that's getting dragged, it's a lot more painful to get dragged, amen? amen. Can I get a witness? Because the truth of the matter is, is God's will is going to be done in your life. The Bible's clear about those things. And so you can resist and get beat along the way and suffer along the way and not enjoy the journey, or you could just get in marching order and get lined up behind God. And when he says, you left, you left, and you're on your right, you're right, and you're kicking him in the back of the heel, you do a change step, amen? Yeah. You left, you left, and you change step. You left, you left, you left, right, left, about face. I can't even remember how to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm telling you what, that's bad, amen. I better look it up online. And so anyways, as we look at this, we see this, I'm telling you, you're going to have so much more fun as a Christian if you'll just get in step with God. His security, you can't lose it, amen. Look at this now. For we have not received, verse number 15, the spirit of bondage again to what? Fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. That is a sweet cry to the Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children Amen. of God. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified to what? Together. <laughs> Listen. God, why did God do all of this? What was the whole point of this? The fall, the salvation, the, the, the redeeming of mankind, all of this, what was it all about? What does it really come down to? It's called fellowship. What did they do before the fall? They walked in the cool of the garden with the Lord. We sing the song, in the garden alone. Are you with me? God desires this relationship with you. This is what it's about. Do you think that he is not going to have the reward of his suffering? He is going to have the reward of his suffering. And so why not give him that reward now and learn to walk in the garden with him? Learn to have that time with him. Can I get a witness? Man, we look at this and we see this. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our, our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Christ and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified, also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is a good tie to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. For the creature was made manifest to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Man, if you're saved in here, say amen. amen. You have a great hope in God because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. You know, when I finally decided to change step and get in step with the Lord and stop pulling against him and stop fighting and just basically just walk along next to him and allow him to do the heavy lifting, can I get a witness? All of a sudden, my life just became a lot more happy, a lot more enjoyable, a lot more less uh, laborsome and burdensome and, 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 and not so difficult. 
when I finally decided to get into the yoke with the Lord and allow him to do what he wanted to do in my life in Solid Rock Baptist Church instead of trying to force people to love Solid Rock Baptist Church in me, trying to force people to want to be in church. You know what I've done? Hey, listen, you want to be here? Praise God, amen. I love you, and I'm glad you're here. You don't want to be here? I'm still going to love you, but you're missing out, amen. It's just that simple. And I'm not going to beat my head against the wall trying to make people love Jesus. Can I get a witness? I'm just going to preach what God gives me, and you got to decide whether you want to love Jesus or not. And if you do love Jesus, the Bible is pretty clear about how you're going to live. Can I get a witness? His security. Man, you can't beat it. For I reckon that the sufferings, amen, can't be compared. For the earnest expectation, verse number 19, of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Looking forward to that manifestation where the Bible says over in 1 John chapter number 3, it says, we, uh, uh, it doth not yet appear, uh, doth not yet appear. Um, let me just go there. First, first, first John chapter number 3. I'm having a hard time pulling that verse out of my head for some reason. Maybe the Lord wants you to look at it. Amen. Verse, verse, uh, chapter number three of First John. Look at it with me. Verse number three, uh, verse number two. Be- beloved, now, now, are we the sons of God? If you're saved, say amen. amen. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. That's right. People can't see it yet, but we know that when He shall appear. We shall be what? For we shall see him as he what? Is. And every man that hath this hope in him does what? Purifieth himself even as he what is? Pure. Your spirit's perfectly pure. But your outward man that perisheth, when somebody loves God and wants to be with God and and is walking with God, they are doing the things that the Bible says so that they will become more pure in this life. Are you with me? And so as we look at this and we see in this passage this matter of security, if you didn't see security in 1 John chapter number 3, verse number 2 right there, listen, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when we see him, we shall be what? For we shall see him as he is. Listen, even as he is what? Pure. Even as he is present tense, what? Pure. Security. You are saved, and your spirit is perfectly pure. Are you with me? It's just this, this hindrance in my life. This problem, this physical brain up here, it has issues. We know, preacher. Listen, hey, listen, these ears have issues. They got hair growing in them. Hey, listen, I'm here to tell you, I I have issues with this body. I have problems. This stinking lust for food is insatiable at times, amen? And man, I'm telling you, the old metabolism doesn't work quite as good as it used to. Listen, I'm telling you right now, this flesh, this is the issue that we're dealing with. This old man that's still alive. But I'm looking forward to one day when Jesus calls us out of this place. And that old man's going to die. And that new man, that new body, that that new man, oh, perfect in the Lord. It's going to be a wonderful day, amen. Listen, his security for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded, amen, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. That's right. Look at this now, verse number 28 of Romans 8. And we know that what? All things. And we know that all things work together for good to them that what? Love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. You've been called to his purpose, not your own purposes. I know that's difficult to hear sometimes when we're trying to do our own thing, but you've been called to his purpose. If you love Jesus, say amen. Amen. 
You've been called to his purpose now. Some people that love Jesus, they try to refuse the purpose of God. But it's just a rough road to do that. And why? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of his son. There it is again. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We see right there in that passage what? That Jesus be formed in you. All the different things that come into our lives, all the different trials and the battles and the struggles and all of these things is so that you can look more like your Savior so that He can get glory and others can see what God can do in the life of a sinner. And so as we look at this, we see His salvation, His security, and then also, lastly, His steadfastness, and we'll be done. His steadfastness. I'm glad that God is a steadfast God. Listen, if you're in here today, I'm here to tell you right now. I'm here to tell you right now. God has not given up on you. God has not quit on you. God has not done any of those things. Amen. God is steadfast. The purpose that he has for your life, he is going to work that purpose in your life as long as you have breath in this body. He is going to accomplish that, what he has desired to accomplish in the life of you. It's what he's doing. And sometimes it's through chastisement. Sometimes it's through those type of things. But God chooses, that is not his desired way to do things. But he's steadfast. He does not give up on his children. Can I get a witness? Amen. And listen, just as a, a good parent never gives up on their children. That's right. They just don't. No matter how bad off they are, no matter how far down the road they've gotten, no matter what they've done, a parent is going to continue to love that child and going to try and do things to get that child, not to enable them to continue to be bad, but to work with them to get them to where they're supposed to be. And God the Father, this is what he does. Lamentations, chapter number 3, verses 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much. Man, I'm telling you, I'm slipping. Uh, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is steadfast. Hey, listen, we have a lot to thank him for. We should thank him for the wonderful, unspeakable gift that he has given us, eternal life. None of us deserve this. No one can earn this. It can only be provided to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Amen. Thank God for not only that wonderful salvation, but that we are secure in Christ Jesus. Yes, let's all be honest. None of us in here would want anybody else in here to really know the ugly that we are. Some of the thoughts that have come through our minds and some of the things that we have thought and some of the things that we may have even done, we wouldn't want other people to know. But I've got a God that even though he knows the worst of the worst of Jim Frost, still loves me. He still saved me knowing not just what I did before I was saved, but knew what I would do after I was saved. And he still loves me, still keeps me, still saves me. Are you with me? And the thing is, is another thing to thank him for, is he is just steadfast. He is not going to give up on you. Amen? Even when you quit on him, he never gives up on his children. Never. And so as you sit here today, listen to me. 
Are you thankful? God is so good. He's such a good God. The things, and this is just really just a tip, not even a tip of the iceberg. It's a grain of the sand of, of all the sand in the world that we've touched on today. God is so good to us. It's amazing. It's amazing what God has for you in your life. Child of God, if you'll just get to this place where you're just going to thank Him for everything, the good, bad, and the ugly, the pleasant, the unpleasant, all of it, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. He is so faithful to us. So faithful. If we confess our sins, He is faithful in what? Just to do what? Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm glad that we've got a God that does not change. Man, so many times in our lives and periods of times in our lives, and each one of us, if we're honest, we're just up and down. So many times we're all over the place. And I can just tell you, a lot of the struggles and the battles in your life will cease if you'll just get steadfast with God. If you know 100% for sure you're going to heaven when you die, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. You can put them down. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Child of God. Are you thankful for all things? I'm here to plead with you this morning. Has God spoke to your heart and dealt with you? For whatever it may be, may have not even been something I talked about this morning. Whatever it is, won't you come and let God have his way in your heart and life? Man, the amount of love that he has for you, the amount of grace, and his grace is sufficient. He's so good. His salvation, his security, and his steadfastness. Won't you come and thank him for it this morning and ask him to help you to be more steadfast and unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for all that you do for us. I pray you bless now this invitation. Help each one of us to be obedient to your spirit. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. The piano's playing. If you need to come, you come on. Let God have his way.